All right, we have here Faithful Word Baptist Church in uh, Los Angeles, I guess it is. Uh, this guy here, Bruce Mejia, and he wants to kill people. Real good. Let's listen here. We should do and we don't do. Okay? So that's a foolish way of thinking. And look, in the New, in the New Testament, in Revelation, guess what? We're going to be executing people. Well, that's a different dispensation. Yeah, that's what you have to say. Uh, in the book of Revelation, we're going to be executing people. Uh, chapter and verse, please. Where are any saved people executing anyone in the book of Revelation? Uh, we're not. Okay, uh, Revelation chapter 19, Jesus destroys the army of the Antichrist. And we rule and reign with Christ. It doesn't mean we're executing people. Uh, let, me, let me share a little scripture with you here. Okay. John, book of John, chapter 16. Yeah, it's 16, verse 2. Well, all right, I'll do verse 1 here. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, speaking to Jews. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. Not going to name any names or anything. Let's uh, zip forward here to about uh, 27 minutes and 40 seconds. And he goes off into some more of the details here of what he, how he believes that, that uh, we should be executing people. It's a New Testament thing. It should We should be executing people. We can't because the government won't let us. But, you know, again, in the time of Jacob's trouble, the, the Great Tribulation that they call it, um, we're going to be refusing to obey the government. You know, that's that's saying that you have to take the mark of the beast. We'll refuse that. But right now, we have to submit to the government. Okay. Oh, that's right there. They're going to be killing people in the future. Yeah. Listen to a little bit of, a, of this. It's just ridiculous. Battle of things to come. And the reason those things are done away with is because the fulfillment of them has already come. Amen. Yeah. But there's something called the moral aspect of the law where adultery is still crime. Amen. So, well, no, no, that's a different dispensation. We could commit adultery all we want now. I mean, is that, what you're, is that what you're trying to justify? Because those laws are still, but we're not keeping those laws. Obviously, because we live in the United States. And our government at this time. Um, when have Christians ever cared what the government says in terms of us following what the Bible says? If the Bible says one thing and the government says something else, you go with what the Bible says, regardless of what the secular government will do to you. Oh, I guess unless you're a Baptist, then you just submit to the government. Yeah. Uh, there's no scripture in the New Testament for putting adulterers to death. Okay, it's not there. But listen to the desperate attempts he comes up with here. Check this out. This time does not impose those laws upon the people. But that does not mean that they're null and void. Because here's the thing. Jesus said, whosoever offendeth one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better than a millstone be tied about his neck, and he would drown in the depths of the sea. That's public execution. <laughs> it's public execution. Really? Okay, did they do it back there in the first century? Hey, we found a pedophile. That's a, hey, you. I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to confiscate your millstone. We need it for our execution here. <laughs> row, row, row your boat. Gently out to sea to drown a man with a millstone tied around his neck. <laughs> cool. What an idiot. It were better for him that a millstone be tied around his neck and drowned in the depths of the sea. Why? What's he saying there? What's Jesus saying? He's going to do worse to that man in hell. Pedophiles and things, they're, they have terrible lives. They'll die terrible deaths and whatever. No, this, this is public execution. We need a lot of millstones to go after these pedophiles. So let's just take them out to sea and tie millstones around their neck. Because there's lots of millstones around. <laughs> Oh boy, it's 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 funny to watch these lost people sometimes. It's it's funny, but it's very dangerous. He's, this guy's a Satanist, but it's it's funny in some ways to just listen to how lost people try to mess up the Bible. That was Jesus in the New Testament. He said, "Well, no, no, no. He hadn't died yet, so he was still kind of technically in the Old Testament." Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. Hey, 
he hasn't died yet, so he's still technically in the in the Old Testament. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Uh, no, that's what the scripture says. Okay. Again, these non-dispensational people, they just make a mockery of it, out of God's word. Um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15, And for this cause he is a mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. It goes down through. The New Testament started with the death of Jesus, not in Matthew chapter one. But again, they 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 mock that and they laugh. Oh, you know, they're, you know, they're lost. They're lost. Saved people don't act this way. Okay, and it's not well. We're both saved, and we just have some disagreements. Show me anywhere in Scripture where we're allowed to have these major doctrinal disagreements and still be called both of us are saved. Continue. Well, you know what Paul said under the dispensation of grace in Romans 1? That they that commit such things are worthy of death. Amen. 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 <laughs> Again, let's go over the scripture here. Romans chapter 1. Uh, down through here. You know, all of this stuff in here. It says, if you're knowing the judgment of God that they which come out commit such things are worthy of death. Uh, wages of sin is death. Certainly, we've all done some stuff up in here. We're all worthy of death. Well, then I guess we should be executed. So, well, I'm a Baptist. I'm a sinless Baptist. I don't do such things. I've never done such things. Okay, continue to chapter 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Okay? Um, a lot of these guys will come along and they will say, oh, it's wicked and everything else, and these wicked sodomites and wicked perverts and everything else, and yet they'll watch Hollywood movies. And refer to Hollywood movies as script, you know, as a sermon illustration type of stuff. Hey, did you guys see that movie, the Terminator movie and whatever else? Yeah, they'll do that. A lot of these Anderson cult members will do that. And and by the way, I'm going to say more about this in the future, but the, the guy's bulging eyes, that's a sign of devil possession. I mean, it's, it's, it's freakish to watch the guy. I can't even think. I have a hard time watching the guy. He's just so possessed. But let's continue here. Another, do another one here. That was in your dispensation of grace. Let me give you another one. What Peter said, that these beasts are made to be taken and destroyed. Amen. I mean, there's no way of human government, this dispensation, oh, we're, we're not supposed to follow those things. Of course we are. Amen. Oh, of course we are. Okay, then do it. Do it. Again, are you going to submit to God or the government? If God tells you to put people to death for adultery, start killing. God will protect you, won't he? Only. If you follow his word, won't he protect you? Of course not. See, he's a liar. He's a hypocrite. But there's going to be more coming out on this lying devil in the future. But I think, it, again, you know, I, I make fun of these guys. But in reality, this is the Antichrist movement. The new IFB, radical Roman Catholic, pre-Vatican II types, they, they line up almost perfectly. The alt-right, um, you know, I have a video on that. Uh, I can put some links at the end of this video to it, this the Devil's Triangle, so to speak. Um, very, very dangerous stuff here. These guys are, I mean, I laugh at them, I make fun of them, but in reality, um, they, are, they are just, they want to get the power to go out and kill people. And he said, that we're going to be killing people in the book of Revelation. So, um, this is a very dangerous movement, extremely dangerous. It is tied in with the military. There's no question about that. A lot of these guys have military goons in their congregation or whatever else. And I believe it's being financed by the military as well. Uh, there's some some uh, human type of stuff going on. KPOC can't get into all that stuff here, but I guarantee you that there's connections there. Um, so. Watch out for this Steven Anderson movement, this cult, this Jack Hiles cult thing. Uh, Jack Hiles, if you watch my expose of him, he literally says we're going to create an army of young men to go out and, and, and change the world and things. And these guys are all offshoots of that movement. Very, very dangerous.